Thank you. Turning now to the big story, the race for the White House. Caucus chaos in Iowa on the evening of the president's State of the Union address. Michigan playing a role in it all. The results of the Iowa caucus still on hold. The Iowa Democratic chairman just moments ago saying that 62 percent of precincts from all of Iowa's 99 counties will soon be reported and calling the delay, quote, unacceptable. It was a domino effect of problems. Issues with the new app were results were being inputted and then login trouble and reporting confusion. And as candidates are turning the focus to the New Hampshire primary, there is a call for change right here in Michigan. Congresswoman Debbie Dingell in a Facebook post calling Iowa a disaster and vowing to work to change what she says is a broken system. Now this as candidates are already turning their attention to Michigan and with the problems in Iowa, there's a new push to make sure the primary in Michigan doesn't end in similar embarrassment. 7 Action News reporter Brian Abel joins us live with a look at those efforts. Brian. Yeah, Glenda, I actually talked with a presidential candidate who wasn't in Iowa, none of the early states, choosing to focus on the votes in March, the Super Tuesday and beyond, including here in Michigan. So I'm talking about Michael Bloomberg. He talked in front of about 450 supporters today, so I did ask him about Iowa. But then I also talked with an election supervisor of the largest county in the state about if Iowa could happen here. By early afternoon, the day after the Iowa caucuses, still no official results, with multiple Democratic candidates for president claiming victory. As eyes now turn to New Hampshire, one candidate isn't sweating the early state results because he didn't campaign on the ground, choosing Michigan instead. It's time to welcome presidential candidate Mike Bloomberg. In a one-on-one, -on -one, I asked Bloomberg what he made of the seemingly botched night in Iowa. They're tearing their hair out and feeling terrible. Okay, fix it and we'll get on with it and we'll learn from that. Staying above the fray, Bloomberg also telling me the road to Washington runs through Michigan. It's, it's one of the great states. It's the industrial heartland. It's got a phenomenal history. Um, and, uh, this, and, and it has a lot of delegates, too. So, you know, from a practical point of view, uh, this is where you want to come. Come March 10th, it's Michigan's turn to vote, and Kathy Garrett oversees elections in the state's largest county, Wayne. And let me just say this. Wayne County is prepared for the foreseen needs and issues. That means the ability to print ballots so precincts don't run out, along with some optimism that all technology will work as it should. But there is still a chance that results may be a bit chaotic because of a new rule. No reason absentee voting, coupled with the inability of vote counters to prepare those ballots for counting in advance beyond pre-opening the tops of the envelopes and removing the privacy sleeves. This is uncharted water, so to speak. So I don't know. I'm again going to be optimistic and be prayerful. However, I think at this point, if that's the only relief that's being offered, I think that we stand a chance of possibly not getting those results that night or, you know, so I don't know. So it is a wait and see to see just how many voters choose absentee and then keep this in mind. The counties, they cannot report their results until each local clerk gives them their results. So it could be a long night come March. Reporting live, Brian Abel, 7 Action News. All right, Brian, and in just 